Hello, everybody. I'm Denise Pass with Seeing Deep Ministries, where we see deep in a shallow world and overcome the battles of the mind with the Word of God. And today we're reading from 1 John chapters 4 and 5. And there's so much, and I was just torn between what to focus on. And as I kept reading it and rereading it, I came away with how to find truth, though there's so much about love as well. And so I'm going to hit on that too. But we live in confusing times and truly confusion has been the norm since sin entered the world, right? We have a lot of noise, a lot of confusion, a lot of different voices, a lot of deception. And God's people need to know how to discern between truth and error in order to live righteous lives. We need to know how to find truth to be able to live it out. And when we know the truth, we are set free to love others and to obey God. And so a lot of times we're speaking to one another to encourage one another from the scriptures as believers. We already believe. So you might say, what do you mean how to find truth? I've already found truth. Well, I think sometimes we too can be deceived. And we also need to be people who know how to communicate the truth that we understand so other people can be born again as well. And so as we're finishing up the book of 1 John, and he has some amazing lessons for us about discerning truth, love, and obedience, all of these words are defined not just by their meaning, but by their action, the doing of these things. We can give lip service and say that we believe the truth, but are we really living it out? Likewise, we can say that we love, love God or love his people, but are we demonstrating that? And this is a challenge. I know for me as well. Hey there, Susan. Good to see you, friend. First uh, John 4 verses 1 through 6. I want to read that to us real quick. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming. Even now it is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and you have conquered them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, what they say is from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Anyone who knows God listens to us. Anyone who is not from God does not listen to us. <clears throat> this is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deception. Got a little cough there. Anyway, um, that's so simple, isn't it? And yet we can forget it. Uh, the world isn't going to listen when we want to talk about truth because they are convicted and condemned unless they admit and see their need of Jesus Christ. And so how do we find truth? By testing the spirits. First, we need to test and see if what we are hearing or thinking lines up with the word of God. We can pray about it as well. You know, Lord, is this of you? But the word of God is a great litmus test. And then there's another obvious litmus test. If people deny Christ, they are not acquainted with the truth. Simply put, John says that those who are from the world speak only from a worldly perspective. They do not speak the truth. Sometimes people don't like to talk in absolutes, but there is no middle ground. We are either for God and truth or not. And so there isn't like a, well, I believe part of the Bible, except for this little part I'll rip out right here. We who profess Christ must live like we do. And so how to find truth? We have to know the truth. Worldliness pulls us away with its lies. We have to be acquainted with the truth to know it. And bankers have to study and know what cash looks like to be able to recognize a counterfeit. They don't really study the counterfeit as much as they study the original, the real dollar bills. And John says we need to know the truth, and we do know it because God is in us. So we have the Holy Spirit living in us who confesses and, and reveals to us truth. We get into trouble, though, when we stop 
listening to that nudge or that check in the spirit when something just isn't right and we may be given to compromise. But when we know the truth and walk in that truth, we are overcomers and free from deception. That's such a beautiful place to be in. So how to find truth? Another way is to know and love God. And how do you get there if you haven't come to a place of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior is to pray and ask God. And I meant to do that. Was it yesterday? <laughs> uh, this is the week of my daughter's wedding, okay? So uh, things are a little cray-cray. But we we need to pray and ask God, even right now, Lord Jesus, I need to know you. Lord, help me. Forgive me for my sins. Lord, I want to be saved. You know, ask him to save you. He will do that. And so if we, we can find truth by knowing and loving God. And so we cannot love others if we have not been regenerated. You know, the world talks about love all the time. They don't even know what love is. You know, Christ showed us what love is. First John 4 verses 7 and 8 says, Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. I think sometimes we can hear these words and we we think of love can be kind of a fluffy word in our culture, right? I love you. I love pizza. I love ice cream. Love, love, love. But we don't really understand agape love is this unconditional. I'm going to love you even when you offend me. I'm going to love you no matter what. You know, this is what Christ did for us. We were enemies and he came and died for us. So we who know God and know his truth have got to then testify to the world of this truth that we know. So the world can know. And so how do we find truth? We live it out. We get deceived if we don't live out what we say we believe. The world needs to see us living in truth. Witness of this is how we love one another. You know, when the world looks on and sees, wow, this is authentic. This is real. These people really love each other. They, they sacrificially, this is a witness to the truth that we say we believe. In First John 5, starting in verse 18, it says, We know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin, but the one who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know the true one. We are in the true one, that is, his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Hey there, Diana. So good to see you. And so, and it finishes here with verse 21. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. You see, idols have a way of snuffing out truth. Because we begin to worship them instead of God. But when we know God and we pursue truth by reading his word, we are not as inclined to believe the lie that idols tell us. I mean, they don't really tell us, but because we think that idols can deliver us in some way, but it's only God who can. I love the scripture of the day because we're in the Christmas season. First John 4 verse 9, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Real life is through Jesus Christ. And when we know the truth and we've learned to discern the truth, we can help others to also come to know Christ. A few final verses here. First John 5, 10 through 13. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony within himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar, made God a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So the one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Right now, friends, you can know that you have eternal life. You can know the truth. This passage here that we've been reading from 1 John in chapters 4 and 5 is such a great reminder that we've got to be acquainted with the truth. We've got to be studying God's word to know it. The world is full of a pack of lies, y'all. We can't go there for truth. We can't go to the fake news for truth. We've got to go to God's word for truth. All right, you guys, go with God and Lord willing, 
We'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.